Hello, everybody. Hola, ¿cómo están? Bien, qué bueno. Uh, well, before I start, thank you for watching my videos. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Gracias por ver mis videos. En la clase de hoy, in today's class, we're going to learn, well, I'm going to teach you and you are going to learn some really good tips or some really good advice. Uh, if you are traveling to Mexico, either for vacation or for business or for whatever, uh, whatever reason you need to travel in Mexico, I thought about this, um, these points uh, to, so, so you can start, you know, learning before you go and don't be surprised or upset, etc. <laughs> Some of these uh, were given uh, by my niece or my brothers or people I know and some of them were thought by me <laughs> just because I was thinking oh you know they should know this but nobody really tells them etc and some of them were given by my brothers who live in in a very touristy place so like that's my best source to do it and another by my niece because my niece lives uh, she's a uh, Mexican-American so <laughs> so she's a good a good one too and also like always you know children know a lot that uh, like we adults never think of anyway let's start uh actually i started here i know it is strange the reason is i'm more comfortable looking on this side <laughs> i don't know for what reason but anyway so the first thing you have to keep in mind is change cambio we call it cambio cambio so in mexico Nobody has changed and nobody wants to break a big bill. Nobody, right? So you have to be ready. You always have to have change if you don't want to lose money. Either because, I don't know, there's like a change war in Mexico. Like, I, I mean, everybody can go to the bank and say, hey, excuse me, teller, can you please uh, break this bill and give me a bit of 20s and 50s? But nobody does it. So everybody's like fighting for change. So even when you're gonna leave a tip, they'll give you just not change. It's like, how do you expect me to leave a tip if I don't have change? But be aware, nobody has change. They expect you to have change. And don't dare to go and say, hey, can you break this 500 pesos bill? They'll look at you like, huh, sure. <laughs> no, they won't do it. Okay, so always bring change. Siempre lleva cambio. Cambio, el cambio es muy importante en México. Now, when you are given change for a big bill, you always have to verify your change. That's not because Mexicans are gonna cheat. <laughs> no, but some might, and especially if you don't speak Spanish correctly or properly, and they see like, oh, this guy is, this woman is not from here. They might do something about it. And I'm not saying all of them. Of course, they are very good, honest Mexicans, and there are others that just don't have those values. So always verify your change. It doesn't matter if you stay there and like, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, no importa. Quédate el tiempo que necesites. You stay there for the time you need. But you're going to count your change. Muy bien. And siempre lleva cambio. Always bring change. That's number one. Number two, coins. See, Mexico and Mexico, we survive based on this uh, financial industry that is called informal economy. <laughs> informal economy means you don't pay taxes, uh, you don't have money to pay taxes, you don't have a salary, you don't have a retirement account, you don't have a healthcare provider, and you don't have anything. You just don't have anything. And that's how most of the country lives. So you're not putting into your SSP, blah, blah, blah. No, there's nothing like that, unless you have a formal job in the formal economy. Now, because the great majority is in this informal economy, you have to be aware that when you're going to Mexico and you're gonna be around, you have to put in your pockets some change to give to people, either to the guy who, or the woman who packs your stuff at the supermarket. 
you give him some, give her some change. To the guy, give him some change. Dale un poco de cambio. They call it el viene vienes. Viene vienes means you come, you come. It means that the guy who stands behind your car and they say viene, 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 viene. Like come, 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 come. That means you're not gonna uh, crash with the other car behind you or on the side. So you have to give him some change too because that's his job. And the person who packs your groceries, that's her job or his job. Ese es el único, el único empleo que tiene. Muy bien. So, you have to be ready to give some change. Now, there are some people who are panhandling. Sure. Then you can give them some change. But what I'm talking about here is just the people that is expecting to get some money because it's their job. Whether or not sometimes it's useful, well, that's, we can discuss that topic for a long time but just be aware that you need some change. Usually you give um, the person five pesos. You know, my brother Hector gives him 10 pesos because he said, he criticized me like when I give five pesos says, you see, that's what there is crime on this country because nobody wants to give anything. I'm like, what, what do you mean? Like I want to give, but you know, the government doesn't want to give anything. So why should I do it? And, but he keeps going, no, no, no. That's why we are like the way we are. That's how the country is like that because you don't want to give. So if you want to, if I don't want to get in trouble with my brother, then I just give him eight pesos. But usually five pesos I give him. <laughs> Muy bien. Uh, now tips. In Mexico, when you are going out for dinner, for whatever, at least you have to give 10% uh, tip. 10% that's the minimum. And regularly what people give. Now, if you want to give more, then that's up to you. If the service was excellent, si el, 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 el mesero o la mesera fueron excelentes, bueno, pues das más, das el 15%, 15%, o el 20%, 20%, whatever you want. But what is expected es el 10%, el 10% de propinas. Muy bien. Now, let's move on. Vamos a seguir con el... Campo del baño, <laughs> the toilet business. Let's talk about the toilet uh, business in Mexico. All right, it's funny, right? Why am I going to give you advice about the toilet? Well, uh, it's quite important. One of the things you have to remember when you're going to the toilet is that very likely you are not, you are not to put the toilet paper in the bowl in the toilet right there why because in some places you can clog it now it is understood in many places that you don't do that so be aware sometimes if you don't have a like a trash to put it your, your toilet paper then you're just not gonna do it and you put it in the toilet especially in very nice places or more luxurious places I think the, the, the technology is there, so you can just throw it, dump it, throw it. But in most popular places, restaurants, like outside the resort, and everybody just puts the toilet paper in a basket, that can look gross. Mm, yeah, maybe. If you're not used to it, when you live with it, then uh, you got to live with it. That's why everybody gets Moctezuma's revenge, maybe. That's the reason, right? Like you just got to, it's understood that you're going to Mexico, you're going to get that revenge. Very well. Now, the toilet paper too, um, this is related to the point five. In many places, especially public places and lugares públicos, como en la estación de autobús, in the bus station, mm, maybe at a very a cheap restaurant, maybe, or, or just like the, the bathrooms on the streets, you know, the public bathrooms, try to bring like a little piece of soap and toilet paper because you won't have that luxury anywhere. Like, don't think that just because you like you feel like going to the bathroom when you're walking around, like, oh, I'm gonna go to the bathroom now. And then you're gonna find toilet paper and soap, jabón y papel de baño. Don't assume that. <laughs> it's very likely you, you won't get it. So just bring it if you need. Now the toilet business. Yeah. Okay, so taxi. 
Of course, I've always given you this advice. In fact, in fact, I have a video about how to take a taxi in Mexico, which uh, talks about this topic um, in more broader, broader terms and with more details. But today is just a quick list of tips that you need to know when you're traveling in Mexico. A taxi, well, always ask the taxi cab, the driver, how much is going to be to get you at your destination. Muy importante. Why? Because as I said, if you are not from the place and you don't know how to claim your rights <laughs> or fight, and as a tourist, I don't suggest you fight. So just be safe and say, ¿Cuánto cuesta? Uh, ¿Cuánto me cobra? How much are you going to charge me? ¿Cuánto me cobra a? And the place you're going to go. Watch my video about that. But that's a good tip. You have to know how much you are paying before sitting right there. You have to know. Very important. Now, it is better if you, we call them sitio de taxis. And it's a place where all the taxi cabs are lined up. Sitio de taxis. It's always safer to take a taxi from that place because they are registered. They... They have an order, they are organized, so you are, you know exactly who the person who drives that car is. And I mean, nowadays I cannot say Mexico is the safest place. I'm not saying it's like the tourist part is unsafe at all. It's not, it's not unsafe, I think, if you don't go off your rails. But be aware that sitio de taxi, so you can say, ¿Dónde está el sitio de taxis? Or, ¿Dónde hay? Where uh, is there a? ¿Dónde hay un sitio de taxis? And people will tell you. Very important, this one, just to be safe. Now, you gotta understand. Pedestrians in Mexico do not have the right of way. And I'm sure you're like, what? Yes, we pedestrians, we simple, popular, pedestrians do not have the right of way. So you always have to be aware when you're crossing a street on both sides. They don't care about you. Cars, drivers, they don't see you. Not the ven. They don't care about you. Now, I've heard a friend of mine some time ago told me, oh no, really, like if you run into some person, you are finished in North America. It's really bad. Like, a pedestrian has so many rights and you're finished as a driver. Okay, in Mexico, you're not finished at all. In fact, you're just starting your life because that might be like an experience in your life, whatever it is. So make sure when you are crossing the street, you look out both ways and you make eye contact with the drivers because drivers in Mexico are very daring. They, they don't even... In Mexico City, give me a break. They don't even care about the traffic light. It's red and it's like, oh, I still have time for 10 cars. Boom, 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 boom. And then they go ahead. So be aware of that. Uh, drive rental. Okay, this is a quick tip. If you're renting a car, make sure you always have something written. Either an email or a contract, the name of the person, the agent. Why? It's because often, and I'm not saying, look, these tips, these tips are not because I say, oh, you know, Mexicans are a bunch of people who only want your money. No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying some people might get, might fit into that box. And I don't want you to get trapped in the box where those people work. So I'm not generalizing here. You know, I don't like to generalize. I am just giving you some information, some inside information. I'm a, what, how do they call it in the uh, stock market? An inside, inside informant or inside information. Huh? <laughs> anyway, so always get a written proof, the name of the person you're dealing with. It's very important because then at the end you might see like, what, do I owe you 10,000 pesos for three hours <laughs> that I get the car? No, eso no puede pasar. Entonces, muy importante. Now, bikes, bicycles. You think like, oh, 
me voy de vacaciones, I'm going on vacation to the beach and I'm gonna rent a bike and I'm gonna bike around the ocean and I'm gonna be so happy. Well, be careful. <laughs> and I'm telling you this, not only because I know it, but my brother, Willie, who he say, he drives a dump truck, you know, those big trucks that carry sand and stones, rocks for construction. He was I, was, I was talking to him and I said, do you have some advice for people who are not from the country? Um, that, you know, they should be aware of or something. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, those bikes? Like, I don't know what they think. When they travel in Mexico, they think that we're going, like everybody's gonna respect the fact that they are riding their bike on the main avenue. And it, it, there have been a lot of accidents with bikes with Canadians and North Americans in general who like to ride their bikes on Main Avenue. So preferably always go in a bike trail. Now, in some places there are a lot, in some others there are none. But be aware, it's dangerous to drive a bike in, in Mexico. You have to take extreme pre, uh, precautions because you can easily get hit in Mexico. Always stay to the right. Don't think that, oh, he knows I'm going to pass. No, don't assume anything of drivers. They are wild. Yes, they are. So what? I'm criticizing my own people. ¿Y qué? No me importa. Es la verdad. It's the truth. So be careful. If you need to ride a bike, ride it, but with extreme caution. Very well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this one was, was uh, suggested by, by my niece, uh, Frida. She lives in the U.S. She was born in the U.S. She's, she is Mexican-American, Frida. And so I was talking to her and we got into this conversation about things that she found in Mexico because once in a while she, she, she comes back. And so I told her, is there something that you would like to share that is important that you think you don't know or you should have known or whatever about Mexico? And she said, oh yeah, yeah. You know, what I find is that for Mexicans, they call this spiciness, like non-spicy, lightly spicy, spicy, spicier, sp very spicy, extremely spicy. And he's like, you shouldn't trust any of that. <laughs> and it's true. You shouldn't trust the level of spiciness. If they tell you non-spicy, be aware. Try it first and be prepared to have some spice in your tongue. Our palate has developed to take a lot of spiciness, right? My tongue is like, ah, it's all right, but it might be really spicy. In fact, one day I'm going to give you some story, quick story. Um, one day I was dining with a, a friend uh, at, a, at a, with some friends at a Thai restaurant and she ordered this like green curry and she said, because she, she asked me, do you suggest something that is not spicy? And I said, well, green curry or red curry, because they are not really spicy, right? Other types of curry are very spicy. And then she's like, okay. And it was very spicy to her, but she couldn't even eat it. Why? Because I don't feel that anymore. And I'm not saying it's, I'm special or anything. That's an average Mexican. They can tell you, oh, that, that's not spicy. Just don't go for it. Just try it first. Be aware. Be prepared. It might have some spice. Now, speaking of spicy, you probably think that all Mexicans eat spicy, but that's not true. I have a lot of friends that don't eat hot sauce at all, at all. Never. Nunca. Jamás. Nunca. Now, the other thing I wanted to give you a tip. Oh, yeah, yeah. Chimichangas. <laughs> you see? As a North American, you think all Mexicans eat chimichangas. And chimichangas is like the plate of the day or like the, the plat de jour. No, no. Nunca. No. In fact, the average Mexican won't even know what a chimichanga is and, and they'll describe something and like you'll be like, yeah, yeah, that's a chimichanga. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's a chimichanga too. Oh, that is too, yes. They don't even know what a chimichanga is. It's very hard that they get it right. And the average one or more than the average one don't ever eat it in their lives. That's kind of a stereotype of the Mexican. Muy bien. Now, food vari variety. Food variety. This is important, and I wanted to share that it's, it's personal. You have to be aware. Uh, it's personal, and also I discuss this with my brother, too, because uh, in many parts of Mexico, you have different foods. So 
if you think like, oh, enchiladas are gonna be all over the place the same. No, in fact, in some places, won't even eat enchiladas. Now that's a stereotype food from the South, but a lot of other places in the same country won't even know that at all. Other things like in the South, the, maybe there is le like, for example, in Yucatan, in Merida, they eat a lot of pig, but in other parts of the country, they don't eat a lot of pig. So in Merida, they have tons of dishes with pig. Pig with this, pig with that, pig with the other. In other places, they like beef. So in the North, they eat a lot of meat. So they eat the whole farm. Whatever you put in the farm, they'll eat it. <laughs> Monterrey, Sonora, Culiacán, Mazatlán. All those places from the North, I mean, Northern, that I'm from the South Center. They love meat. They eat a lot of meat. Maybe in the South, not so much a lot of meat, etc. So be aware. Depending on what part of you, you, where, where you are going or where you are is the type of food. So be open to try it. As I said, and this my brother Hector told me, like, look, everybody gets Moctezuma's revenge in Mexico. Everybody. So just bring your Moctezuma's revenge pills <laughs> so you don't have a good time. Very well. Water. Now, agua. Muy importante. You never drink water from the tap in Mexico. Nunca. Jamás. Not even at a restaurant. If they give you a jug of water in some glasses, don't drink from that. The, the likelihood of you getting sick from that water are very high. It's not worth it. No. Always get bottled water. Very important. Even in the fanciest restaurants. I have people who work in the fanciest restaurants in Mexico. They, we are used to it. We might have some uh, tap water and we won't get sick maybe. In fact, one of my brothers, because I have many siblings, told me, oh, I remember when you drank water from the tap and I thought you were gonna die and you didn't die. I was expecting you like to die like five days and you didn't. Well, maybe I developed some parts. It wasn't water, so I had to drink water and I didn't. So we had developed some, uh, disinfectants for those germs but i'm sure you haven't so be aware that wherever you are just bring your bottle of water or ask for a bottled water and that would be, that should be good now teenagers and alcohol that was given to me by my brother hector hector <laughs> hector very well see my brother says he works at a resort so he says you know and, and Hector is very by the book, so he won't do this. But he says that a lot of, very often, teenagers who go on vacation with their families, just at dinner time, they say, okay, we're going to go for a stroll to the beach and la, la, la. We're so happy. Thank you, daddy. Thank you, mommy, for bringing us here. You're great. Don't ever change. <laughs> so they go around with this uh, to discover nature. But in fact, they only get drunk. Why? Well, because there is no drinking age in Mexico. There is no drinking age. I mean, yeah, if you are nine years old, they probably won't sell you a, a beer or alcohol or cigarettes. But if you are at an age where you don't know, they don't care. In fact, they probably like to give you more drinks to see how like, your development of drunkenness is going to go and laugh about it. Those are servers from resorts. They are not overseen by their bosses to see did you give alcohol to an underage person also don't forget you guys from north america or england or europe are taller that you look bigger right so you might be 16 but maybe you look like 21 the same in mexico you might you it's different you might be 20 uh, you might be uh, uh, like very not very old but you will be older and you look very young, <laughs> but you guys are big and strong. So like, oh, like, as long as you don't talk too much, they probably won't even realize you are underage. And if your children are with you and you expect them to go and discover nature and, and the stars and everything, don't expect servers or staff to know or to ask your child for an ID <laughs> or, or to take care of like, oh no, I cannot serve you alcohol, sir, I'm sorry. Uh, you are an underage. 
they don't know and they don't care. There's no such a drinking age thing. There is, but it's very likely they won't remember that day. Very well. Anyway, these are only 13 tips I'm giving you today, but this is part of a series. So you will have more of these related to these and that to resorts or to normal places or more business. So don't forget to watch the next part of this playlist or this video. This video is one, but it comes two, three, four, and etc. We have so many to think about, right? When you're traveling, there are so many things to know before you go away. I wish I had known, uh, anyway, it, that's a personal thing, but <laughs> I wish I had known a lot of things when I traveled to the US <laughs> because it's important that you are aware. Oh yeah, before I go, another tip is, in Mexico, people get very close to you, very close, like like talking to you, like, hey, hey, what's up? And they even give you a hug, like you don't even know, and they give you a kiss and a hug, right? Only one kiss. I'll talk, I, I talk about it in, my, in the next part, but I'm just gonna give you a big hint. Don't be afraid if people get too close to you. It's not like they're gonna take your money or your wallet, no. Could happen, yes, see, could happen, but, uh, more likely it's just that they are gonna be, they are being friendly and they are gonna hug you. So they are very close. So don't be afraid of the closeness of the Mexican. They don't have the swine flu or anything like that anymore. So we don't have that. So you're safe. <laughs> I'm just saying this because in North America, I wish I had known that if you get too close to a person, they get like, <laughs> they move like, hey, it's too close. You're invading my private space. <laughs> very well. I cannot wait to teach you the next tips. So watch my other video. And before I leave, I would like to tell you to go to my website, butterflyspanish.com and sign up to get my newsletter. My newsletter is called Dimensiones, Dimensions, Dimensiones. And it is because I talk about different layers of the language, different dimensions of the language, either cultural, social, um, a popular, linguistic, all sorts of layers of the language. And it's information that I think is useful to you if you are learning Spanish. It's not really a spam or a blog. It's more a long mm, discussion or a long article about topics that I think are going to be very useful to you. Um, thank you for watching my videos. I appreciate your donations. Your donations allow me to make more videos about more topics. Thank you so much. Thanks for donating. If you can donate, I'll appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. De mi corazón. Del fondo de mi corazón. Muchas gracias por ver mi video y nos vemos la próxima semana. Saludos.